In this lesson, we'll learn how we can use curve deformers to rig the tentacles of our character. So let's go ahead and get started. So throughout the duration of this course, we'll be learning how we can use the deformation tools here in Toon Boom Harmony to very effectively rig characters to be used for cutout styled types of animation. Now before we move any further, I just want to mention a couple of things. If you're using Animate or Animate Pro, you will not have access to the deformation tools. This is a feature exclusive only to Toon Boom Harmony. And then secondly, I'm using the Toon Boom keyboard shortcuts. I have a few previous Toon Boom courses in which I use the Adobe Flash keyboard shortcuts. So if you hear me mention a specific keyboard shortcut that sounds different from when it did in one of those previous courses, just keep that in mind. Now, if you want to change your keyboard shortcuts, simply come up to Edit, Preferences. This takes you to your Preferences dialog box. Just look for this first tab right here titled Shortcuts. By default, it'll be set to Toon Boom Harmony. However, you can very easily change it to Adobe Flash or Toon Boom Studio if you're more acclimated to using those particular keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so let's go ahead and take some time and talk about the character that we have here in our camera view. I've basically designed this really fun kind of alien tentacle monster and I just want to share with you how I have this character broken up um, over here in the layers section of our timeline view. Alright so basically his entire body is just one big head right so we have that on one layer. Um, you'll also notice that I have multiple layers just for all the different pupils for his eyes. So if we ever animate this character in a later course, I could very easily dart those pupils around in different directions. I've got a layer for the mouth. So if we wanted to have multiple mouth expressions, uh, we could easily have that on that layer. And you'll notice that for each one of the tentacles or arms, if you will, um, each one of those is on its own layer, and it's a solid drawing for each one, meaning that I don't have this tentacle broken up into multiple pieces. I don't have uh, multiple joints or anything like that designed on that tentacle uh, for us to be able to move it around. And this is because we're going to be using the deformation tools to take a solid drawing like this and very effectively and fluidly move it around. And this is something that's really, again, a really cool and exclusive feature that's only for Toon Boom Harmony. Same thing for the legs as well. Each leg is just a solid drawing. I don't have the leg broken into different pieces or two different pieces, for example, having a knee joint or anything like that. And of course, I also have um, each foot on its own layer. So what's great about the deformation tools is that we don't have to break down a character into as many pieces. Now, again, a lot of it does depend on the overall design and style of your character, but you'll find that you don't have to break down like appendages, for example, into multiple pieces. You can just have one drawing piece, uh, one solid drawing, which is what we're going to focus on um, for this um, tentacle right here, this, uh, this left tentacle that he has. We want to basically um, rig it using deformers to where we have the ability for him to kind of move it in a wavy kind of organic fashion okay now I'm starting off in kind of a T pose I designed the tentacles to be sticking straight out um, rather than already drawing them in kind of a curved wavy fashion you'll find that when you rig um, something like this it'll um, operate a lot more effectively if you start out with it very straight like this and then begin to move it um, in kind of that wavy tentacle like fashion that we're going to be aiming for. So I'm just zooming here by hitting 2 on our keyboard and I want to go ahead and select arm 2 in our layers section. That's basically our um, left tentacle. I use 2 for left, 1 for right. So before we begin rigging this arm, I want to make sure that we have our deformations toolbar up here at the top. If for whatever reason you're not seeing it, simply come off to the side here, right click, and look for deformation towards the bottom of that drop down menu. Simply check mark that, that'll give you that toolbar right there. So these first two buttons in this deformation toolbar are really the most important when getting acclimated to the deformation tools. This first one is your rigging tool. This basically allows us to rig this drawing layer. It's going to allow us to either drop in deformation bones or curves 
um, basically dropping in joints, allowing us to break up this solid drawing. So you want to have that selected. This second button, we also want to so, uh, select it. This is our setup mode. What the setup mode does is it allows us to preserve the state in which we rig a drawing layer. And you definitely want to have that selected. You'll find that that is um, very important to have later on, as we'll see. Okay, so once we have our rigging tool selected, you'll notice over here in our tool properties, we have um, some different buttons for mode. By default, you'll see this button right here is selected. This is basically our automatic mode. It allows us to apply either deformation bones or curves, depending on how we uh, basically click or drag um, on the drawing layer. Now, again, we're going to be kind of rigging something that should be moved very organically. It's a tentacle, after all. So I really just want to use curve deformers. Curve deformers are great for moving things that are intended to be, be very organic in their movement, whereas bone deformers um, could be really used for something that's more mechanical. Let's say you had an arm with a specific spot for an elbow, a wrist, and shoulder joint. You may want to use bone deformers. We'll touch on bone deformers and learn how to use those um, later on in the course on a different character. But I want to go ahead and have this button right here clicked on so that I am in ensured to be only using curved deformers. Okay, so once we have that done, I want to come over here off to the side of this tentacle and I want to just click right here. This drops in our offset point. Think of it as kind of the shoulder joint, kind of the area that locks in the placement of this tentacle right here on this end, okay? You'll notice when I did that, it applied a layer, a deformation layer right above the drawing layer for our arm, and it's the parent to that layer. So now what I want to go ahead and do is continue on down this tentacle just clicking and dropping in additional curves. So something like that. So each one of those little red squares is basically a curve. You'll notice that on each side of one of those squares, you got these little purple circles. Those are basically Bezier handles that allow us to manipulate and kind of modify those curves as we'll see later on. Now right now they're very short and I wanna have the freedom to very easily grab them and move them around. So we want to stretch them out a little bit. So we can do this by grabbing our transform tool over here in our toolbar. You'll find that you'll be using the transform tool heavily with your deformation tools. You'll also notice when you select that that you no longer have your rigging tool engaged, so you can no longer drop down any additional points. I'm just going to grab each one of these Bezier handles and kind of pull them out just a little bit. I don't want to pull them out too terribly far because I don't want them to overlap and just make things confusing. So something like that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Just zooming out by hitting one on my keyboard. So once you're satisfied with the overall chain, you're ready to basically exit setup mode and go into the mode to where you can begin moving these different um, points around. So we are still in setup mode because we can see that setup mode is still um, engaged up here in our deformation toolbar, but also because this chain, um, this rig basically is um, red. Once we exit setup mode, we'll see a couple of things happen here. Uh, first, we'll see that that chain is now green, which basically means we're in a mode now where we can begin to manipulate this rigged tentacle, right? The other thing you'll notice is that this chain doesn't look like it did when we I basically rigged it moments ago. Those Bezier handles aren't out where I wanted them to be, and it also kind of deformed the overall tentacle, okay? So I don't really want to start off with it in this state. This is where we want to apply this button right here. This copies the resting position, or the position in which we rigged the arm moments ago in setup mode, and it copies it to the current state in which we have the ability to begin manipulating and moving things around. So you can kind of see that signified on the icon. That red right there is your setup mode, and that arrow pointing from that to that green, which is the state we're in now. So before you click on that button, make sure you have the layer, the deformation layer selected, then click on it. And you can see how it basically rectifies all of that. That arm basically looks back the way it was, and we can see that the state in which we rigged it um, is now also there. 
Okay, great. So I'm just holding down space bar to kind of pan around our camera view here. So what we can do now is we can begin to grab these different points, these different curves, if you will. We could stretch out the arm if we want. We can just kind of start to begin to bend it around. We can also grab these bezier handles if we want. We can pull them out even further. We can just start to begin to move things around very effectively. Okay, so just kind of zooming out here. So you can see how effective this tool is in that we didn't have to break up this arm into multiple pieces. We were able to basically use these curve deformers to basically move this, um, this uh, tentacle around very fluidly. Okay, now what I would actually like to do is hit Control Z and just take a few steps back here just so we can kind of illustrate another point. So once you've got all of your curves dropped in here, you may be looking at it and thinking, gee, I really wish I would have dropped in one more. I don't really want to have to undo everything, go back and just completely re-rig it. Not a problem. We can actually rectify that in the network view. Okay, so let's switch to our network view and we'll make a little bit of room here so we can see the network view a lot more clearly. So here in the network view, we have all of these different modules that represent all the different layers that make up our character. And we can see we have a module for that deformation for our arm two or our left arm. Simply click on that little arrow right there. This will take you into that deformation chain. You'll probably see a one right there. Click on that arrow for that. This takes you deeper into the, the deformation chain and you can see um, basically the, the three different curves that we dropped in, right? We can see all of those right there. We can also see the offset right there, okay? So we can see that all in that chain right there. So let's say we want to drop in another curve right here. Well, this is where we can jump to our module library. And this will probably be by default next to your timeline. Once you're in your module library, you want to go to your deformation tab and look for this little curve um, icon right here. Simply click on that and let's drag that into our network view. And then by holding down Alt, you can drag it and snap it into the chain. You can see how it basically adds that curve in there, okay? And at that point, you can start to kind of move uh, curves around and stuff like that. Now, probably what you'll want to do is actually go into setup mode and start to kind of move those around so you're not directly manipulating the arm just yet. And now, in this case, um, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't really want to have another curve. I think I have enough right there to really effectively move that arm around. So if I, if I want, I can simply just pull that curve out by holding down Alt and just pulling it out of that chain. And then if I don't have any use for it, I can simply delete it, okay? So just very easy, handy way to basically bring in some additional curves um, when working with deformer curves um, on your character, all right? Okay, so in between lessons, I encourage you to basically exercise this same kind of rigging setup for the opposing tentacle. In our next lesson, we're going to continue working with curved deformers by kind of focusing on his legs, basically taking kind of the same process. And we're also going to focus on his feet and spend a little bit of time talking about the design of a drawing when you're applying a curve and just kind of where to apply that curve through that drawing. It was very easy for us to figure out how to bring that curve right through um, this very symmetrically shaped tentacle. But let's say we want to have the ability to kind of bend and, and move this, this foot around, you know, especially once we um, eventually animate this character perhaps later on. We want to have his feet to basically be able to bend as he pushes off the ground and we want to, we could use curves to do that but where do we apply that curve throughout this drawing it makes a difference so stick around and we'll see you in the next lesson as we continue to work with curve deformers